and basically the the life crew is going to be focusing on on serving on reaching out and also do activities in spanish level we call it friendship groups english level we call it life groups so let's say that Mahoney want to do one day just fixing a car. Hey, who, who want to come to it and let's go and fix a car? Mm -hmm. And then you turn that to Centro Spiritual. So that's, that will be life crew. Mm -hmm. Hey, I want to go and play basketball with the guys. Well, let's go football. Let's get the new one. Hey, let's invite somebody from that never came to the church. Mm -hmm. And serving as a, hey, this widow, she needs blah, 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 blah. Oh, she needs... Mm -hmm. the, to be molded or to be painting. How do you so give they, access to the people? So like say I, I want to go work on bicycles and how do I know who to call? And how do well, I they will have a team. They will have a leader. Okay. They will have a lead one that he he will be managed. So if I am the one for for the growth, the evangelism, so you know who to contact that person. Will, okay, we have this house so and so. Yeah. We meet here every two weeks, mm -hmm. here we meet every month, here we have, but if I want to just go and play basketball, so I know who the leader in that area, I'll go and talk to him about okay. it. Okay. So stuff like that, that will make it easier for, mm -hmm. and every leader will have to sign up, you know, forms, and the, the, he makes sure that he will be a leader, and that he will make some crazy stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. that so that, that's kind of, yeah, kind of belly. So that's kind of the way is is structured right now. Okay. And, and it'll help because that way you have not only the first part of the of the leadership is involved in the last one, mm -hmm. but you have somebody that is taking care of everybody there. Okay. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. So maybe that's that's an idea too. Yeah, as we're sure. talking on because it's hard bro, to connect. For me, it's hard to connect on Sunday with somebody. Right. So busy. More if we have to preach, mm -hmm. then you have to say hello, <laughs> and then you have to, and then in the meantime you just, and and not only that, when somebody tell you something before you preach it, hmm. what happened if, if the Lord give you a word, and then the person said oh, he's taking, a, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with that. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather just have that on when I go to the houses, mm -hmm. when we meet in a friendship. Okay, what's going on here? Let's, you know. I'm, yeah. You busy, but also you accountability, and they see that you there, and they tell you stuff that they right. they don't feel comfortable telling you something because the time issue. Mm -hmm. So I see those, you know, the benefits in it. What's a typical? What's it look like for your leaders as far as getting into homes? Like, do they? How do they keep that balance with their family life and church life? Do they do two days a week that they're out, one day a week? Yeah, this way it is like. You if you want to do it once a week, good. If you want to do it once a month, it's fine. If you want to do it twice a month or even more, mm -hmm. it just depend of the. It's not depend on the leader. Yeah. And I believe that's good. Like some, sometimes I will be in three houses on one Friday. I just yeah. because I love to be in the houses. That way I can connect with people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm just not gonna be. I just will wait until Sunday. And I will see them. Yeah. But it's just you know it depend on the leader. Some leaders. Okay, I will go once a month. How do you fine. keep track of who you're talking to? Like, uh, uh, I have my kind of my list of people in my that I'm overseeing, or if I see that is, if I see there is somebody that is new and struggling, mm -hmm. I might be have like you know notes, yeah, and I'll put like a, a red flag on it, yeah. just for me to be aware of the situation, mm -hmm. and also see to who that person is connected in church. And then I can tell that person that is more spiritual, please help, mm -hmm. you know, because maybe he will open to that person more than me. Because sometimes as a pastor, you're the last person who knows what's happening. Mm -hmm. People will tell their friends, people don't tell the pastor. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah, it's one of the issues. Yeah. Um, so that's what I always try to find, like what, okay, if I see somebody that is connected to this, people, I'll just get around it. Uh, if it's something, you just maybe just a prayer and, and just a word of wisdom and, and just move on. I don't even make notes on that. I just, you know, but if something there is 
serious, I want to make sure that I have some. And what opportunities do you have to share those notes as you're learning things about the people when you, you go to your leadership meetings and say, hey, yeah. Uh, I will try to make it happen without saying names because it's also required, you know, it's like, it's privacy. Yeah. But I think that some cases are good for, even for me to learn. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, you know, you, you learn it from, 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 from our mistakes but also from other people's mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I take that as a, as, a, as a learning process and also as a helping process. So maybe I will share with them, okay, they help us to pray because we have some families dealing with this, with this, that. Mm -hmm. Or help us to pray because this is happening. Yeah. So, or be aware of, you know, if you see something, say something, or if you notice something, approach with love, obviously, and kindness. But, mm -hmm. so that, those are the things we have to, I think, have that. And I think that will help any church. Sure. That will help any church. That's what the Lord Jesus did. He took time with the multitudes, then he took time to just eat with them on separate mm -hmm. and tell them about what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then he went back to the movies and then he went back. So it was like training section, you know, he's like, mm -hmm. and then they realized that when Jerusalem, when the Lord wasn't there physically on spiritual, but they started getting the same, you know, we will develop deacons or we will develop team. Yeah. They will work, will serve. And we will develop another team. They will go and reach out like Philip going to Samaria, like all these guys, you know, that was pure evangelism. But then they had in Jerusalem, pure serving was serving the tables. Mm -hmm. So they developed those teams to work it out. And the Bible says that we went from uh, 3,000 to five to 5,000. So you added 2,000 more people. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they had some structure. Yeah. So I, I think it's important in every, in every how do your leaders model what you want your team leaders to be? Like if I'm wanting my team leaders to do certain things, how do you, how do you model that? Because in my mind, building on relationships, the, up, the uh, pastors, they need to model that, that, um, that love for one another and their families if they're expecting others to go out and love other families. Do you have times where you as pastors get together and and I, you have your meetings, yeah. right, and your study times. Um, but you know where I'm. To me, it seems like if if a group of elders are wanting their congregation to go out and and make build relationships, then the elders can't do that all themselves. But they need to they need to have good relationships with one another, and then they have their groups that they're. It's kind of Jesus had twelve and. And then to all 70, 70 went, yeah. Yeah. So how do you? But I think it's, 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 on my perspective for Spanish, what what we do is just you connect with people. Mm -hmm. Because when you have, like, when you have everybody that is new, they just, you know, first year to second year in church, so you need to connect with them. Mm -hmm. And then as you see, some people develop the leadership, you know, quickly than end the, the others. Mm -hmm. So you start getting those yeah. aside and start teaching them different on leadership. Mm -hmm. And they will be become leaders to others. Yeah. And that's what the Lord did. He called a bunch of people, but on the the people who respond, he started teaching them. Mm -hmm. And then they became leaders of other leaders. And then they became disciples of other disciples. And then these people became disciples of other disciples. Yeah. So it's, it's like a process of discipleship. Mm -hmm. So we are disciples. We need to make disciples. Yes. So right now I'm working to make more disciples. Mm -hmm. And those disciples, if that's the culture of our church, those disciples will make more disciples. Mm -hmm. And those disciples will make more disciples. Because one thing, bro, is the in our churches right now, it is the Bible never says the Christian will make a Christian. There's nothing. Biblical. Right? I'm a Christian, but I can't make another Christian. Jesus said, if you're a disciple, you can make disciples. And discipleship is another level because it's actually, you continue that pattern of the teacher. Mm -hmm. And disciple, according to the Hebrew, is just the student. So if you learn from this teacher, 
that means that you will produce that a long term. Yeah. So people right now in the church is try Christian make Christians. And that's not gonna happen. You have to be disciples, making disciples, to love, to serve, to reach, to heal, to pray, to cure. You know? Because I'm coming on Sunday, I see six, eight hundred people. Yeah, I'm part of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. But somehow, during the week, I have to be a disciple. When we come to worship, we come to receive the word of God and all stuff, we are the body of Christ. Sure. But then when we go out of the building, we are disciples. And I believe that's what happened. The Lord called 12. Then he, the Bible says clearly that they came 70. He sent 70, two by two. Mm -hmm. Then those 70 went to 120, the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost, 3,000. So it was a huge jump from numbers between 120 to 3,000. And they managed that because the Bible says that they went to 5,000. Yeah. So I think that is the whole relationship of discipleship, not just Christian. So some people get a little overwhelmed thinking that if I have a coworker and I, I, you know, I may observe the way they talk and the way they act, I'm thinking they probably don't know Jesus. And so... They may get a little overwhelmed thinking, you know, it's my job to win them over for Jesus. So how do you how do you define discipleship? Do I disciple those who are first interested in Jesus and then I train them? Or how do you would you define discipleship to somebody who has that relationship with like a coworker? My perspective I think discipleship is 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 not even somebody have to say anything. His actions will speak yeah. volumes of him. And then we see Paul getting to a place in the book of Acts, asking the disciples of John, okay, so are you guys up with us or are you not? not? I mean, you got baptized, you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and, and they say, no, we never heard about it. And then the Bible says they became disciples too. So it, it, some people have beliefs, but maybe they never had a really true relationship with the Lord. But I think that as a disciple, they make known. And if, if we read Acts 4, you will see that the people say, this guy's been with Jesus. Hmm. We know that something's different. <laughs> they speak with boldness. They don't know the law. They don't know what's happening. But they speak under the anointing of the, of the Holy Spirit. So I believe that sometimes we don't have to speak of it. Mm -hmm. It's just people will see that something. If you're a disciple of the Lord, people will notice that. Yeah. Because the Pharisees noticed that. The Sadducees noticed that. The people noticed that. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that they did put Peter and John in jail. For what? For just preaching. They never did anything wrong. They just was preaching the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they preached Jesus all over. And then they said, no, you're not allowed to speak in that name. But they realized and said, oh man, these people were with Jesus. Because the Bible says that they noticed that they were with Jesus. So I want people just to see and say, okay, this guy's been with Jesus. <laughs> so I don't want people just to label me and say, oh, that person is Christian. Because yeah. these days you have all this, you know. Yeah. But I want people to say, okay, this guy's been with Jesus. Because something is different in that guy. Maybe his attitude, mm -hmm. you know, maybe the way he come approach people. Maybe the way he manage his work. Maybe the way he's managed his family. So I believe there is a lot of things there. So this is why, like, Jesus said, go and make disciples. He never said, go and make Christians. Go and make member of a church. Right. That I don't think that has to be our goal. That has to be, because in these days, you want members of the church. I want disciples. Because if we get disciples, bro, we're going we're gonna to be... <laughs> we'll have enough room. We're going to have revival. Yeah. We're going to have people coming to our building because... It's not just about one person. Yeah. It's about the whole church doing what it's supposed to do. Go, 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 yeah. and make disciples. So I think that's, that's for me, is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Go and make disciples. Just don't go and make Christians because if we start defining by that, so then we're going to be in trouble. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but the disciples is, is the main key there. I believe that that's one, and I believe this is the time for us to make disciples yeah. in every level of our churches. So right now I'm working. I want to make disciples. If you see a young man that is, he has the ability and 
you really seeking a guy, I'll get connected to that. Hey, let's see once a week and let's talk about what you're feeling, where you see yourself, things like that. Come with me, I'll show you around the building. I'll show you what we do there in the back. Mm -hmm. You know, what's gonna be the next planning? What, what are we do in our sections when we plan? The young man will be like, okay. So for me, that's the Paul and Timothy discipleship. Mm -hmm. Come with me to the trip. Come with me to the mission field. I will show you what you need to do. I know that you are a good, you have a good testimony. You have faith because we saw that in your mom and your grandmas. But come with me. I want to show you different things. And then we see Timothy writing mm -hmm. letters. So that for me is, is powerful. So uh, Paul made that discipleship yeah. process even stronger, I believe. Mm -hmm. And maybe some people, they don't see it there, but I, I want... If the Lord take me out of this land, there, there will be people remember, oh, he was he was teaching me this, he was teaching me that. Yeah. You know? Because what happened if we're not here and then everything is dependent on one man? Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna be in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have to depend on God, but also as a leadership, yeah. you know, as discipleship. So the main goal right now is be and make, be disciples and make disciples. Be and make. Be and make. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> be and make. It doesn't matter what level. Be and make disciples. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a level of go to the house of the widows and serve them. Mm -hmm. That for me is discipleship. Because if you take a brand new family who just came, they don't know anything about serving, you took them to serve, that widow there is respectful. In our churches and the Bible, it's even clearer that serve the widow. So they will learn to serve. Before they learn, oh, I want to be there preaching. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for me, that's that's type of discipleship. You know, even if it's serving, or even if it's just praying together, or even if it's doing Bible studies together, at any level, discipleship is the key. And I believe the people come to our churches, and they want to see, okay, if you will use me or not. Yeah. So that's not going to happen if we don't have discipleship mind set. Yeah. What are some hindrances of a discipleship mindset? What do you think would cause us to lose sight of that? Probably just, just that's what I'm saying, bro. You just focus on Christianity. Only. You know, just, just come Sundays, be with us two hours and go. Check. Done it. Yeah. Because then you lose any, even at work. You go to your work, well, I'll do what I have to do, and that's it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to move in one finger to the other position because I'm just co -hate. So that's what happened, I guess. And because the disciples were moving all the time. Mm -hmm. These guys, when they went to Judea, they went to Samaria, they went here, they went there, they went. You know, so that, making connections with those, I think that's, that's, that's help. Mm -hmm. But some churches just arriving on Sundays, and I don't think we, we call to be like that. No. Then we call to be living in season and without season. I mean, not only on prayer, but on action too. Yeah. So I believe when you get to that pattern, it's because you're coming to Sunday and that's it. That's what I was. That's what I would think, you know. Yeah. Because if I just come on Sunday, expecting people to come, two hours, then we're gone. We'll see you next Sunday. If that's a church culture, um, I recognize that you can pick the new people that come in. And eventually it will overshadow what once was. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on how to encourage the existing body to have more of a discipleship mindset to help them realize that each one of you have something good to offer in the kingdom? I will, uh, my perspective, I will try to uh, talk to them as individual maybe. Yeah. And and encourage them to, they can do better. I mean, they, they you've been here longer now. Yeah. You know the word. You know what needs to be done. You can do it. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, you've been here long enough, you're not doing anything, you're going home. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I'll take that person and say, please, help that yeah. brand new family if you can. Mm -hmm. You have that potential. If you're good on 
on whatever area that you're doing right now. If you're good on the parking spot and you do that wonderfully, take that other program and make him want that position like you. Mm-hmm. And then you can move on. Because I realized, brother, every time that you had a disciple, then the Lord moved you up to something else. Yeah. You know, when I started working with the youth in Madrid, then the Lord moved me to work with the groups. Mm-hmm. But I had a, an excellent disciple for the youth, the heathen. He overpassed what I did. So that was wonderful. Mm-hmm. And then somebody on the groups also. And then the Lord moved me to Bible study. So I was moving, moving, moving until I got to to be to working as a pastor. But I always left somebody in place. Yeah, because I didn't want to leave that spot empty. Right. So my motto wasn't, oh, I want to be there because I want to be there. No, it's just because I don't have a room here. I need to go mm-hmm. and just the Lord promoted you that, that way. Yeah. The problem these days is that you want that hat, you want that position even though you don't know how to get there. (laughs) But I believe you have to learn how to get there before you get to that position, because then you will understand what is the need on the parking spot. If I never serve on the parking spot, how can I know how to manage these guys when they come and say, hey, we, you know, or the people over the cleaning team, the kitchen team. Mm -hmm. So I've been in all these places because I want to be there to learn. Because then when you get to a position that you need to lead them, you'll say, well, when I was doing yeah. this and this and that, this is what we did. Mm-hmm. But maybe I've never been there. So, well, somebody told me that. If you <laughs> <laughs> I believe more on the when I was there. Yes. Jesus did it also. Jesus served, and he said, do it in remembrance of me. Do this when you do that way. Mm-hmm. So Jesus, Jesus first went and did that by himself. And he told them, you guys want to do it. Mm-hmm. And they did it. And then they told the other people, you want to do it. And they did it. So I believe if they did it, we can do it too. Mm-hmm. I think that's basically my perspective. But it's always be and make mm-hmm. those disciples. That will change any, that will change any, 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 uh, like, limitation of any church to grow. Yeah. Because it's biblical. You know, and we have a lot of books about it, people, but when you do the, what the biblical, you know, what the scripture says, God will give you the growth, not the people who need it. I've heard it said, um, if you focus on the task at hand, the results take care of themselves. Yeah. And I would say what you're teaching me is the task at hand is make disciples. Everything else takes care of itself. Yeah, because, I mean, it's, it's his business. It's not my business. I'm not, I, ne- I never created this company called church. Mm-hmm. He created that. He designed it. Mm-hmm. He wanted it. He died for it. <laughs> Coming back for it. Yeah. So so that's saying that the, he's, he's passionate about this business called winning souls, mm-hmm. making disciples. So I just need to follow what he did. And, and everything that I see in the scripture world is just disciple making. He yeah. gave time to people. He said with people. He had passion about people. He prayed for people. He rebuked people. He led people. You know, <laughs> but that's that's all the process of of the child, of discipleship. But I believe that if the Lord did that, I want to follow those steps. Yeah. Because I don't want to follow a book, just how to get to be a pastor <laughs> before <laughs> how to be a servant, how to be compassionate, how to be you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, I would respect every other, you know, every other opinion out there, but I believe that if we do the method that the master used, we're going to have it. We're going to be successful, not maybe on the eyes of men, but in the eyes of God. Yeah. And the bottom line, that's what we want. Mm-hmm. I want him to say, hey, well done. I, I really don't care if other people will say, well done, and then he say, this is not good. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. That's good. I agree. Yeah, bro. So I believe that's that's my heart for discipleship, and and we're working on it. It's a process, and will take time. But when the church get that mentality, the devil have to be scared. He'll be afraid because 
He just now wants that with everybody, I think. <laughs> with everybody, you know? Yeah. So it's not one sermon. It's a bunch of people working during the week to get people. Mm -hmm. And then that sermon makes the impact. That teaching makes the impact. And then they bring more people. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, and that's what you want even on the, on what we see normal. You see, you open a restaurant. What you want people to do? To tell people about it. Mm -hmm. If not, you will die in your business. So you treat these people well, hey, even given, if it's a Mexican restaurant, give it extra salsa, or chips, or whatever, you know? <laughs> because you want those people to go and spread the word. Mm -hmm. So I believe in the church. We're not giving chips and salsa, but we're giving something very salvation. We, you know, that's, that's who we are. We have to be the ark of salvation. So I want people to go out and say, man, you have to come. You have to come. I mean, you have, so that is making disciples. And here's the thing that in, is a caution to me. If the reason I invite you is to see the, the music and the programs or the church, I know that's a part of it, but how do we help the people not get caught up in the grander, like uh, the building that God blessed your church family with? It's, it is, it's all inspiring. How do you help the people stay focused on come see what our God did, not come see this thing man did, or these programs? You got to hear our preacher; he's amazing. That can be okay, but it puts a lot of pressure on a preacher. Yeah. And come be with our our programs for our children; they're a lot of fun. That puts a lot of pressure on the youth pastor. Mm -hmm. How do we help our people have this attitude of invitation, and not lose sight of we're inviting them to be in the presence of God? How do we help them with that? My perspective will be just not only come to uh, to our church to see a great service on Sunday, but also to be part of family yeah. and and be part of, of this God who can bless us with this building. Yeah. He can bless you with the same thing. Or this God who offers salvation for everybody, He can save you too. Or our life groups, or connect groups, or care groups, or all this. So it's just not only about Sunday. Yeah. 